What what's what do you consider an industry plant? Okay, an industry plant is someone who is <clears throat> is decently famous. Are you wearing something? <laughs> I'm playing, I'm playing. <laughs> no, I just had to decide. I had to put it on. So. Okay, no, 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 wait, wait, wait. So, um, an industry plant is someone who is good enough to make it, right? But obviously, if you see a, a plant with potential, the industry is gonna take you in and grow it as and feed it to the public as much as they want. Even though the public doesn't want to hear you, they're gonna hear you. Ian Dior, bro, he had like a couple hits. Obviously, he blew up, yeah, with the help of the industry. Okay, hold on. <clears throat> I agree. Listen, yeah. I agree on the point that yeah. sure, mm. the industry helps them, blah, 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 right? Mm. But in a sense, wouldn't every single artist be an industry plant if they had help from somebody in the industry? Come on, bro. No. In my opinion, Ian Dior wasn't an industry plant. This guy just blew up off TikTok and he just went viral. But why do you think though? Because he plant he got planted in the right connections. No, no. Because uh, No, it just went saying, viral. It became no, no, a trend, no. bro. No, fam, you don't see the behind the scenes, fam? You don't know what they're doing? You think they... Okay, like I said, the, the plant. Fam, if you see something that's going to thing, you're going to water and water and water until it glows big and then what else what happened to ian dior okay maybe after a couple hits he's gone he's not really gone a lot he has a core fan following still mm, i don't know but a lot of artists have that bro yeah but at the end of the day he didn't really grow you feel me because after the industry was done watering his plant boom we're on to the next one come on that's bro. not what an industry it is, is it's because they have so much connections that they're obviously gonna make it how even though they're good they're decent or they're no shit. but you get connections as you grow bigger so you can't really say he's an industry plant if like he didn't have nobody before but as he became as he started getting success yeah he got people he got connections okay. yeah he got more opportunities mm -hmm. but that's because they saw value in him it's not necessarily okay let me he was it. born with it yeah true let me let me there's let me, a theory mm. Claro was the industry Claro plan. was actually a real industry plan. Yeah. There's a theory because apparently her dad was already big in the music scene. Facts. And some of her songs, okay, I don't want to claim anything. Mm -hmm. I'm not trying to claim anything. But the theory is like some of her songs, like her dad yeah. introduced her to people to help her with her songwriting, this and that. Okay. But that's why she blew up right away. Okay, uh, one thing I forgot to really clarify is... Uh, industry plant has connections from the jump so it's like they're either connected even though they haven't been in music before they already had that connection oh let me start making music boom since i already have this connection. okay yeah i agree so like early stages no i agree yeah so for example for example <clears throat> selena gomez industry plant when she yeah. went into music because why she's already in disney yeah exactly that's what a real industry plan i don't think an industry plant is necessarily just a a rapper or a singer on the come up and then they get connections. That's just their career. Yeah, that's the. I, I forgot to mention like the early stages because yeah. remember I said about when we were talking off camera. Bro has his dad in the industry already. Boom. That's why he he's. Mm. You feel me? The, okay, I don't know about who you're talking about. Yeah. You know what I mean? But <laughs> <laughs> we'll just leave it at that. We'll okay, just leave yeah, it we'll leave that. it at that. Okay, would you say there's industry plans for like boxers then? Because there's some boxers that their father was already a coach. You can't consider that shit an industry plant, fam. No. They they train their way up. <laughs> and in the same sense, in the yeah. same sense, an artist, whether they be a singer or a rapper, train themselves up, bro. But it's different though, because it's like mm. a boxer can't get knocked out. Because once a boxer gets knocked out, then boom, he that's the decline. An what are you listen, talking listen, listen, about here? Listen, listen. An industry plant who makes music, yeah. even though it's a shit song, they can still promote it to make it a good song. A boxer, once he gets into the ring, it's him. Like, if he gets knocked out, decline. Yeah, yeah. But you if you me? if you make music that shit, then it's still decline. Not if you have the industry behind you. That shit will. Mm, okay, me? I see. I see what you're saying. Yeah, exactly. I do see what you're saying still. Yeah. But <clears throat> there's no way. Let's say Creed was real. Let's say Creed was real and. He was the son of a of a Apollo Creed. Mm. Is that technically an industry plant? No, he's still his own fighter. So, but you're saying it's different for sports. It's it's hard, yeah, because you're talking about sports, you're about something about music. But it's fam. still art, fam. It's still art. Yeah, but at the end of the day, it's like business. If we're really talking uh, industry plant, we have to look at the business behind the scenes. Mm. I know there's a lot of different artists, like painters specifically. Mm. They had mentors that were really really famous and that's why their work yeah is worth so much just because they were taught by that person i think it was shit was it aristotle i think aristotle mm -hmm. he taught so many different philosophers yeah. i think he specifically taught uh you know alexander the great mm, yeah so i think alexander the great he had three different um wishes after he died oh yeah i know about these you, yeah. you, you know what you want to say it no, no i i i know about the wishes but i don't know what they are i don't think i remember oh. either <laughs> 
know, but I know, I know one. The one that hit me, crazy one. The one that hit me the most was his one wish was that they he wanted his body to be carried out onto the streets in front of everybody. Okay, just to show. Oh, not only just carried out, mm. but having one hand out of his casket. Why? Just to show that everybody goes to death empty-handed. Wow. Now, he also wanted all of his money, all of his riches uh-huh. to be given and donated to the poor. Oh, shit. Because he wanted to show this money, it goes to everybody else after you die. Mm. It doesn't stay with you when you're dead. Yeah. And there's another one. Fuck, I forgot the third one. But he really just wanted to show like, Yo, once you're dead, once like, you're dead, it's wraps. Like, yeah. you don't bring anything else with you except for you leave one thing, your legacy of what people remember. I know. There was this movie called The Peanut Butter Falcon. Never heard of that. So it was Shia LaBeouf and this other kid. Now, Shia LaBeouf had this, yo, this is a sad quote, bro. But he yeah. said, the kid asked Shia LaBeouf, what do you think happens after we die? Mm, what do you say? He said, honestly, it's just over. But the one thing you have to remember is you just want to live. Hopefully, they'll have a good story to tell about you once you're gone. Mm. That's it. Yeah. Because that's that's the only thing you can really leave behind. Can mm-hmm. Will your story people tell about you after you pass be good? I know. And it's kind of cool because it's like, when you really think about it, our kids are going to look back and watch this. That's like, kind of true. Like, that's going to be an insane feeling. Like, when I'm when I'm hella old and we're just watching the throwbacks, mm. like, that's going to be insane. Yeah, it's so sick to see because imagine my, my son is my age right yeah. now. Yeah. And then he's cu- trying to learn and, like, become his own person. Mm through me watching like how i matured exactly because this is this is the journey right now (laughs) this is the journey and you get to see every single moment of it that's unheard of before imagine we might have the if if you have a son and i have a son and we have uh what do you call this the longest streak of podcasting because it's like the simpsons (laughs) like taken we have like 500 episodes, right? Yeah. we get too old we have our sons that's kind of they sub sub in (laughs) That's kind of crazy, like tag team. That's <laughs> crazy, bro. You know what's crazy? Because I have a sister and you have a sister. We yeah. should do one episode. Oh, <laughs> yeah. yo, yo, that's crazy. Yo, we should have one episode. My sister like switches, and then you're. <laughs> it's like it's like a it's like an alternate dimension. Yeah, yeah. Yo, that'd be fire. Me and Sharon were talking about this too. Mm-hmm. Like you know how all of us, uh, me, you, Sharon, are like close friends, right? Yeah. And we thought that um. Uh, all our sisters were gonna go and into high school and create that other that the other friend, friend group. group. Yeah, but it's like we used up all our luck because it's like they're in three different ones. They're, yeah, they're they're so not always like, together. Yeah. But that's how it happens in high school. Looking back at high yeah. school, I realized a lot of my elementary school friends I used to hang out hang out with every day all the time. Like yeah. we just kind of grew apart. Yeah. Well, some of them, some of them, I still the only ones that I still really, really cold close to my heart mm-hmm. are my neighborhood friends, bro. Oh yeah. I think there's something about neighborhood friends. Leave down in the comments if you guys agree. The neighborhood friends are the ones that stay the longest. True or false? False. My all my neighborhood fans when I, it's so awkward when I see them now. Really? But like the the ones on my street though. So it's like um we all went to different schools, but we were like playing hide and seek. We yeah. were riding bikes, but every time I see them now, it's like. A look of like awkwardness. It's like really. I don't know why that that is because we were so close back then. But after just we got older. Did you guys time, go to the same high school? No, we didn't. That's why too. So so you're saying if you have neighborhood and high school and you went to the same high school, bond for life. Yeah. No, because not only were was I hanging with my high school. I mean my elementary. Okay. For example, for the audience, they don't know. Yeah. My neighborhood friends are Josh, Denzel, John. Yeah. They were on the podcast before. Mm-hmm. They've been with me since elementary school, yeah. came with me to high school. Now, every single time we're waiting for the bus, every time we're like, whatever, mm-hmm. at school, like, I'm gonna see them. Going home and getting to school, mm-hmm. I'm gonna see them. Hot take, but not really a hot take. The, f- the people that you meet online for like maybe a month usually become your closest friends. Mm, that's a crazy that's take. Not that's, a crazy that's not take. true. That's not a crazy take. How many failed Tinder dates like, have you been on, bro? No, no, listen, listen. No, I'm talking about like Instagram. Oh, so a lot, of, a thing I notice is a person who's across the country from me yeah. that I barely know support me way more oh, than you mean some by of that. my friends. My yeah, bad, no, my bad. But, but that can lead into a crazy friendship. Mm, like, okay. if, like I have some friends that I still talk to right now in the, I think it's the UK. Yeah. That if I really wanted to fly them out here and just chill and hang, mm-hmm. like I know we would like be friends, friends. Mm, okay, so okay. But it's the distance that, that like I'm not discrediting internet friends. There's, there's some real, real internet. No, friends. internet friends can be one of your lifelong friends. I'm I was saying, you. I was saying, because I was thinking about like 
people yeah. I met online. And I started thinking, like, back in the day when, like, you're on Tinder and yeah, shit, yeah. they talk to somebody, it's like, that never lasts all yeah, the time. No, obviously. A obviously. lot of, there's many, there's many that fail. Yeah. So, like, I want to say the ratio of failure to it's a win, <laughs> it's not that great still. <laughs> it's not that great. But, yo, look at it. Mm -hmm. Man, there's some people that do try to follow you or like be your friend online. Yeah. You're not going to hang out with all of them. There's maybe one, two. Obviously. Now obviously. compared to, now compared to the friends that you see in person, mm -hmm. you're more likely to stick around with friends that you meet in person rather than online. Oh yeah, for sure. That That's a given though. Mm -hmm. But I'm like, in terms of like, I don't know, it's maybe it's a tension that the distance builds. Mm -hmm. You know, it's like, I want to, I want to keep talking to this person. I want to continue building a relationship because me and you, okay. I could, I could not talk to you because I know you're going to be here. That's true. You feel me? So it's, like, so, so it's like, why? You feel me? It'll always be good. But I don't know. It's a, some tension between long distance. Interesting. Okay. Do you think, do you think. Long distance relationships? Mm, no, 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 no. That's not what I was going to say. Okay, okay. Do you think the friends that you can't share silence with, you're not really friends? Oh, Loki. Oh, uh, Loki, that's cap too. Because some of my friends, I still can't share silence with. Really? Yeah. But like, we're the closest friends. I just like talking to them. No, like share. Can, can you? share like comfortable silence I'm awkward fam no I, I don't know why but some of my closest friends i can't share like i'm still like it's mad awkward to me though it might not yeah? be for them but in my mind it's mad awkward i just don't like silence really you know me you know me that's I like, kind of crazy i like talking to me. that's like actually talking. crazy to me yeah do you think do you think if you were by yourself trapped in a room okay for example mm. uh andrew tate recently okay he got locked up and he was he was still able to to tweet out Text, stuff yeah. and tell people like what he's What's on his mind, blah, blah, blah. Mm -hmm. He tweeted this one thing and he said, imagine you lock yourself in your washroom mm -hmm. and, you, and you stay there even just for 24 hours. Do you think you can survive? 24? Yeah, I can do it 24. Now, 48. With food? I have food and stuff? Yeah, you have food. But like you, you have nothing. You don't have your phone. Oh, you don't I have don't no entertainment. It's just you and your thoughts. Oh, I think I'll do it 24, maybe not. Okay, 40. 24 hours, turn off the lights though. Oh fuck, that's hard. I would, I would tough it out. I'm gonna mm. lie, I would tough it out. I Loki, I feel like I want to do that experiment to see would I, I kinda, come out a, diff a different person. I think you would. Really? I think you would. Hot take, bro. I think you become out. You would come out more creative. What? At least me. At least me. Now listen, hear me out. Hear Why? me out. Okay. When I was a kid, bro, I didn't, I didn't always get to buy new toys and shit. Yeah. Come up with. Things to entertain myself. Yeah. I have to fucking entertain myself with anything I had, bro. Nah, but it's I would different. talk to myself with pencils, bro. It's different though. You're de you're de you're fighting demons though. So you're you're too like focused on that. Like you're fighting your inner thoughts. You're not getting creative. <laughs> like you're not like nah. Let me let me chill for a minute. You're like, yo, hit me out, hit me out. Alright. Hit me out. I don't know. Not everybody works at this, but I feel like nothingness creates the most. No, nah, that's not true. Yes. That's not true. My, my uh everyone's best ideas is when you're doing something else that you're not supposed to be doing so say you sit in a room and you're like all right let me let me focus no, no ideas come out okay but i'm gonna say this though mm. let me just say this because when there's nothing you're forced to come out with something you're not gonna sit enough depending on your mindset though it i depends, guess it depends bro. depends on the type of person you a are, lot of I people guess. would not come out there with bullshit like mm. they would come up with like the worst ideas probably you ever watch old boy no, I haven't. Bro, you have when to fucking watch Old Boy Fam. Okay. I watch movies, so I, I'm gonna explain, I'm gonna explain Old Boy to you. Okay. This is dead ass my favorite Korean film all time. Okay. Craziest plot twist still to this day. Alright, let me hear it. So Old Boy mm. is pretty much this guy. Yeah. And he was headed to his daughter's birthday party. Mm -hmm. And I think what happened, he got so drunk on the way there, like he was hanging out with friends and shit to mm -hmm. celebrate without her. I don't know why. Yeah. But he ended up passing out and blacking out drunk what? now when he woke up he woke up in this room almost like a hotel room okay. all he had was a tv and he tried to exit from the door uh -huh. and it was locked now every single night there would be a vent and it would shoot out like a poisonous gas to mm -hmm. make him sleep so he just gets knocked out and then he wakes up okay. now when he gets knocked out they feed him food. They put things in the room. But he was trapped in this room. <laughs> Shit, I think for like, I think for like 15 years. The fuck? Is this guy Nasubi? Yeah, pretty. It's, this is this is deadass like Nasubi yeah. in a movie. Oh, now, shit. what happened was, bro, so the whole time, mm. he was pretty much going insane because he's by himself, right? Yeah, obviously. The only thing he had was his TV. And on the TV, there was a news article or there was a news story saying... 
that this guy, he ended up murdering his daughter and his wife, oh, which no. wasn't true because the audience knows isn't true. Yeah. Now, what happens, bro, while he's there, he's always contemplating, like, who the fuck would trap me in here? Why am I even in this place to begin with, right? Yeah, yeah. Every single day, uh -huh. he would train himself from the TV, from what he was watching. He was watching, like, Mike Tyson. He was watching, like, all these karate films. Okay. Just learning how to fight, just copying movements. Because he yeah. knew, like, one day, I'm going to get the fuck out of here. <laughs> and I'm going to beat the ass of whoever locked After me in this 15 shit. After 15 years, though? After 15 years. So he just kept doing that shit, right? Now, one night, mm. he, he was able to, like, almost escape by turning a brick in the room yeah. and pulling it from the wall. Okay. But the moment he did that, the next day, he was like... He was like dropped in like a suitcase. What? They put his body in a suitcase and left him on top of the roof. And he was set out for free. Huh? Yeah. So they just, they just let him out. They let him escape. They, oh, so were there people? There's got to be people watching him, right? Yeah, there's people. There's people watching him, <laughs> so right? So they're like, okay, so since this guy is upgrading every day, fam, we can't hold him for that long. Yeah, so taken two, they had sur surveillance cameras. Like he's locked in there for years. They yeah. knew what he's doing, mm -hmm. but they decided... All right, let's let him out now. It's time. Yeah. Now, what do you think? Why do you think they did this to him? No, I think it's because, um, what do you call this? He was getting so big that he was going to cause some mayhem because he's been training mm. and he's just going to go out and murder everyone. Now, not even just for that, yeah. but why in the first place? Now, check this out. Okay. The, the whole story is fucked, bro. Yeah. So the reason mm -hmm. that he was even put into that room and locked away like that for years okay. was because... When he, oh my God, I'm getting ahead of myself, but like there's so much to the story. Yeah. All right. When he first gets out, mm. he decides to go get sushi. Yeah. And when he's there, he sees, oh, this, this waitress, like she looks very beautiful. I'm going to talk to her, right? Mm. Now she serves him like octopus and he starts eating it. And all of a sudden, this guy passes out. The like, fuck? Blacks out. Boom. Now the last thing he saw was this, this girl. Yeah. He wakes up. In this girl's apartment, and the girl's like taking care of him and shit, blah blah blah. Right now, he's so thankful because you know she took care of him. Mm. What happens next? He leaves, and I think for some reason, gangsters like mobsters were after this girl. Okay, she ends up getting like almost kidnapped. Now he has to go and save her. I know how this is going. Yo, he has to know. You don't know I what. Do, do. You don't know where the fuck is this is going. Trust do, me, you I don't do. know where I this is going. I can predict it right now. Okay, ready? <laughs> so he saves her. Yeah. He saves her and they like almost fall in love. Okay. Okay, now check this out. Okay. They fall in love and they do the deed. You know what I mean? The uh, yeah, uh, yeah, uh. Yeah, yeah. Oh, I wish I didn't say that. Why, why? But they do the deed, right? Mm -hmm. Oh my God, bro. Why, why? So... Fuck, bro. Is he a mutant? Is he a mutant? No, check this out. Okay. So what happens? <laughs> he gets a call. Like this whole time this is going down, He, ha I think he has a tracker on him and he's getting like phone calls from this mysterious man. And this mysterious man is telling him like, oh, I know what you're doing. I'm the person that traps you in there. You got to come look for me, blah, blah, blah. Uh -huh. But he's letting him live his life. Okay. The reason he's letting him live his life is he purposely put people in his path to meet. So he purposely put that girl in his past to meet. Yeah. And the real reason is so fucked up. So the reason this guy, his name is Daesu. Yeah. The reason Daesu was even trapped into that room to begin with was because the revenge that this guy wanted on him. So this guy, when he was in high school, Daesu went to his high school. Mm. Daesu caught him doing some promiscuous things with his sister. Yeah. And he was so embarrassed and she, the girl was so, his sister was so embarrassed. Mm. She killed herself and jumped off a bridge. Oh, so this was just the plan to get back. Like, so, I'm gonna control your life now. Yeah. Mm. So he was so devastated by that because Daesu like told the whole school yeah, yeah. and it became such a big thing. And then the story was like, oh, because they found out he was dealing with his sister, like mm. she committed suicide yeah. and which is dead ass what happened. Yeah, yeah. Now, bro, the woman mm. that this guy put Fuck. in front of Daesu. Yeah. Who was it? It was... Her, his sister? No. Oh, okay. <laughs> it was his daughter. The daughter that the birthday he was going to go to. Oh, no. And he did, obviously didn't know that because he's in a bin. He didn't know that he's been away oh, for 13 years. And there was a news article saying like his, fam his family got killed. What the fuck? And was he framed for this? 
he was obviously famed for it, like for like, you know doing. No, 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 no. So, cause his 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 daughter's already old. Now yeah. this is the crazy part, bro. Yeah. So when the evil guy <laughs> reveals the truth to Desu, yeah, he's like, "This is your sister. I mean, this is your daughter." Yeah, he kills himself. We'll say he, he offs himself, bro. Yeah. And then Desu is left there, like, "What the fuck do I do now? Like, I have no life. Yeah. The only person I love is his, and he has to live with that." in his head oh, so that he smashed his daughter now check this out yeah. bro he went to uh a hypnosis or a hypnotist mm. and tried to try to delete all the memories yeah. of what happened fuck and at the end of the movie this is at the end of the movie it's left up to the audience because after he does the hypnosis to forget everything he's still crying and he's still like he feels like that pain hasn't been washed away yeah and the theory is yeah that only the memories of it, of what happened stayed. The other memories didn't. Damn. The other memories guy's... got the good memories got erased, but nah. the bad memories stayed. Nah, that's super unlucky. Wait, who was the guy that? What was the name of the guy who got revenge? Who was doing this? I forgot his name, but it was just a classmate of Desu. Holy fuck! Now nah, put the revenge chain on that guy, bro. That, that shit is fuck. insane. No, like, bro. Imagine you, you're so mad. 13 years, no, bro. No, but, but it's not just putting a guy in it. It's like you want to control how he lives his life. You don't feel, you don't think that guy felt any type of remorse? Like what? Nah, fam. It, it, this is not based on a true story, no? I don't think so. Okay. I hope not. Like the closest thing is the Subi, but like, like yeah, I don't think. I it's, really hope not. Yeah. But <clears throat> it's just the fact of that terrible situation happened yeah. to him where his sister had to commit suicide because of his like horniness. Okay. Which is fucked up. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And then- Bro, his revenge was doing the same thing to him, but wow. onto another level. Because what's the equivalent, right? That Loki is the equivalent, yeah. but that's messed up, bro. That guy, no, that guy who set it up is Loki a pedophile, bro. Or like, is so he set that up, bro? Yeah, like he has to actually, imagine, like, like he made him go to that certain sushi restaurant to yeah. see this girl. So as, uh, as he was being knocked out at night, mm. he was also getting hypnotized, Word. so that he would. He would purposely, subconsciously be attracted to that girl, yeah. find her, find that sushi location, order a octopus, everything. Like everything was predetermined yeah. because he was hypnotized. Old, what, what is old boy? Is it a Japanese? It's a Korean film. Korean. It's, it's okay. A, no, that, that that was a crazy ass story. No, but it's like, I don't know why, but the, the always the themes in Korean shit is like that pedophileness because because I don't know if it's in um Korea or Japan. Yeah. I don't know if you know, but you know that sound it makes when you take a photo. It's like... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? So yeah. you're not supposed to, and it's banned in Japan to turn off the, that mute button. Oh, for so, real? Yeah, so it's like, if they hear that and uh, the, a person is taking picture of like some pedophile girl, like a pedophile is taking picture yeah, of a yeah, girl, yeah. everyone around them will hear it. Oh, yeah. so, so they purposely want it on yeah. so that you can't be a creep. If you turn it off and take a picture, like so, so it, it'll show, it'll still make that clicking sound oh shit yeah. so it like the phones you buy there it, you it, can't yeah, silence you can't it silence it damn yeah. so imagine you're trying to go like this even though you're as sneaky as possible fam <laughs> <laughs> like, you're like what the fuck <laughs> yo yo now i can just imagine like you, you know like you know foreigner, when you're like a foreigner not a, like you know when you have to fart but you have oh. to make it not obvious you have to like drop your book <laughs> like you fart and shit i can just imagine like <laughs> oh. Like you're ready to take the pick and you just ah! yeah. <laughs> like you sneeze or some oh, shit or you just that. scream in the middle of the subway. Nobody would notice. Nobody no would notice. But okay, tell me why? Why the fuck is there so oh. many like horny Japanese people like like weird Japanese? Yeah. What, what's the word? What's the word? Um, kinky? No, 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 no. Abnormal? No, 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 no. Uh, motherfucking, what's um, the word, bro? That, it's that's um, the word, horny fam. No, there's a word for it, bro. <clears throat> there's a word for it. Yeah. So, Quagmire, you would call him it. Because he's very sexual. He's, no idea. I feel like I'm playing a game right now. I feel like I'm yeah, playing Mad Gab no or some idea. shit. I, I feel like I'm playing like charades. I like <laughs> Quagmire, call him. I don't know. Oh, it's not pedophile. It's not like if it thing. comes up. If it comes up, just randomly say. If I'm telling a story, no, it's, it's bothering me. Okay, you go yeah, ahead. No, yeah. if, I, if I'm randomly telling a story and it's like the deepest story, just say it. <laughs> Fuck! What 
is that? Hyper horny, hyper horny dude. It's not hyper horny, it's a word, bro. Okay, whatever. I don't know. Pervert, that's the word. Oh, what the hell? That's the easiest. Per- I don't know, I forgot that, that word, fam. Because I don't use that word often. Yeah. But perverted. No, no, Japanese, I don't know why, but they, they take the extra steps to like cancel perverts, which mm. is good though. Do you think it's because of anime? Low key. Yeah, low key. They're, they're hyper sexualized in anime. Yeah. So. But yeah, another thing in Japan. That I didn't know about is like you know when um you go into a hospital mm. and you're given a white like uh ribbon mm. on the on your wrist yeah yeah so there's like a crazy red ribbon story mm. so when you're when you're in Japan like I said the dead once you're dead and you're gonna get sent into the morgue mm-hmm. they give you a red ribbon like a red band yeah like yeah. a red band yeah and in Canada we have a red white ribbon with all of our information on it right yeah that's so. Right. There was this doctor, right, that I think he worked overnight Mm -hmm. and his last patient was supposedly at 2 a.m., right? So he's like, all right, let me take a break. I'm going to go to the basement. Mm -hmm. So he goes into the basement with another woman, right? He's just just talking. He's like, oh, how's your day? How's this? Everything's normal. Yeah. They get to the basement, right? The doors open. They see an old guy, like an old patient, Mm -hmm. walking, walking. And he's getting closer and closer to the elevator, right? And the guy, he starts he starts spamming the close the elevator door. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And the woman's like, excuse me, sir, like, fam, he's like, he's hurting. Why didn't you let him in? Mm. He's like, only the dead have a red ribbon. <gasps> oh shit. Did he asked the woman, did you see that red uh ribbon or was it just me? And this is crazy. You yeah. know what the woman says? What? She says, Oh, something like this? She no. she rolls up her sleeve. There's a red ribbon. Oh fuck. Man, this guy's <laughs> talking to ghosts, dog. No. This guy's talking to ghosts. That's crazy. Yeah, bro. That's a plot Jump twist. That, that's a real <laughs> That's like a twist. Dave Chappelle like yes. fucking punchline right there. <laughs> oh, you mean like this? Like this? <laughs> No, real shit, real shit. I was so excited to tell that story because it's like some shit out of a movie, but this is like real life. Damn. Yeah. And this, this, I have to tell this to you because I, even when I was writing it in my notes, yeah. I was so scared to tell it, but I just have to get off my chest. Okay, tell me, tell me, so, tell me. yo, there's this cursed Japanese poem mm-hmm. called Tamino's Hell. Mm. And this was released in 1919, right? Yeah. So, bam, it has a crazy backstory because it's like, it was written by a guy who made like nursery rhymes? Oh, shit. hella popular songs. So, so he purposely made it to curse people. No, I I don't know if it was purposely, but there's been so many accidents that people think that once you say it out loud, mm. you either die or your soul will be cursed for Fuck. the rest of your, the years. And I'm gonna tell you, all the times it's cursed people. Yeah. So one was the death of Suji Terayama. So he created a film mm. strictly based off this poem. Mm. Fam, it was released in 1974. A week after this uh, film was released, passed away. Damn. Another one. There was this college girl who was dared by her friends. Yeah. They had, they're like, we're going to put you on video. I want you to recite this poem out loud. Oh, fuck. And they have it on video too. Fam, she says it a week after, passed away. A week after, so same thing. Yeah, week after, fam. And every everyone else who said this out loud has either got illness, they've either got um a feeling of some evil spirit is around me. Damn, bro. That's like death note type no, shit. No, real shit, real shit. Yo, okay, okay. Theory right now, theory yeah. right now. The reason it's a week, exactly a week, uh-huh. cause there's seven bars in the poem. So one bar for every day. <laughs> It's a, I think it's a hefty <laughs> one bar for every day. That's insane. Yo, it's like um, I don't you don't watch Chainsaw Man, but man's yeah. know what I'm talking about. So in Chainsaw Man, yeah, uh, I think his name is, is Haki or Haku. Haku. I think. Yeah. Fuck, I forgot the name. My bad. <laughs> okay. But he has a samurai sword. But every time he uses the samurai sword, yeah, it's very powerful. But every single time he uses it, it takes away time on his life. Oh, so shit. it's the most powerful weapon in the world. Yeah. But every time I slice you, every time I hit you with it, uh-huh. it takes off a chunk of my life. Is he part of like the military? Like he's not allowed to use it? Or? No, it's like a cursed. It's like a cursed item that he got from a demon. Okay. Yeah, but is, is this an anime? This is an yeah, anime. Yeah. It's, not, <laughs> it's not real life, bro. No, but imagine you had something like that where you had the greatest thing in the world. Yeah. 
Oh, what would be the equivalent to that? Like something you would really, really want to use, but every time you use it, it takes oh. a, it takes a little bit. Like it takes like a week off your life or like a month off your life. Fam, imagine my phone. Dog. I would be dead. <laughs> Damn, your phone. I feel like it's impossible. Okay, maybe. Okay, aside from the phone though, what's like a something that we don't really need to do? Yeah, need to do. Mm. If you want to get, if you want to get like philosophical, yeah, <laughs> drinking alcohol. Cause that's pretty much the same thing. Okay, but that's like I, I would be good off alcohol. Yeah, maybe it's like every time you have to tie your shoes. That's tough. That's tough. Because your shoes don't usually come undone. If you have a good knot, yeah, you're good for the rest of that's your life. Oh shit! But there's some <laughs> shoes, fam. I tied that shit in grade five. <laughs> still, it's still, it's still tied to this day, bro. It's still tied to this day. I know those ones. <laughs> You triple not that bitch. Yo, that's not coming undone, <laughs> yeah, bro. Facts, facts. We'll be the equivalent, though. That is, fam. Choose? Because it, it would be a crazy game. Because if I knew you had that, right? Mm. And if I was like that that old boy revenge guy. Yeah, yeah. Fam, I, every day. <laughs> that's fuck. <laughs> that's fuck. That's fuck. <laughs> also, in Chainsaw Man, yeah. there's, there's a character uh. that... Their power mm. is every single time you touch them, you lose time off your life, bro. Oh, as wait. your power, <laughs> as your power. But imagine, so if I was that guy, I would just be giving mad people hugs. That's <laughs> fucked up. That's so fucked up. Oh, yo, uh, you know that's a thing, right? What? I think um in mafia movies, it's called the kiss of death. Oh shit, like yeah. a hug? Yo, so apparently <laughs> yeah. this happened in The Godfather 2. Mm. So in The Godfather 2, spoiler, yeah. his brother, he betrayed uh what's his name sorry he betrayed the dawn yeah who is uh al pacino the the main character of the godfather right mm, yeah. so he betrayed the godfather yeah. and his own brother fam okay now when he re when he, the dawn realized his brother betrayed him uh -huh. what he did he grabbed his face and gave him a kiss like on the lips okay but in mafia terms that's called the kiss of death so it's like marking yeah oh, so okay. the moment he does that Everybody else in the room knows what's up. Mm. It's it's time for him to go. Fuck. Yeah. Man. What if you're the mafia? Well, okay. What if you know this signal and you see him? <laughs> that, no, no, no. That's the <laughs> thing. Nice so the lap. moment it happened, yeah. he he pulled away and his eyes went like this. He, was, he knew he was going to yeah, die. Okay. It was so fucked. Okay. I think, yeah, go he ahead. He was like, he was in shock. Yeah. I think the hardest one though, like, um, like the signature death. You know how Joker has, um, once he kills people, he does like a, a smiley face. Oh yeah, yeah. You know, he puts the paint. The the kissing Kate Barlow, the red lipstick on. Mm. Well, as soon as she kills a man, kiss and like anyone who's trying to suspect the body, like who did it? Yeah, you know, because there's a there's red lipstick on it. That's <laughs> yeah. hard. That's fire. <laughs> what would yours? If you were like a okay, <laughs> no, <I'm not> gonna, <laughs> no, but if you were a murder, like what's the craziest shit you would do after? Like, and then that's where we got you, FBI. We got him. <laughs> Yo, no, nah, nah, FBI, we got him. No, nah, cause real, no, nah, not murdering, but like, imagine I was in a fight, like right? a call sign type of thing. Yeah, like a call sign. I've always wanted to, like, imagine if I was in a fight and I knocked the guy out, like a. Club, oh, what's what's your like, like a celebration? Yeah, I would want to pee on the guy. Ew. Like I would just want to like like total. No, that's a, that's what they call a kink. No, no, no. I would <laughs> no, no. This is like this is like disrespect though. Like imagine some like you get knocked out and the guy starts. <laughs> Yo. You feel some <laughs> shit on your face like, Ew, what bro What the fuck? Ew, fam You know what they call that? What? They call that wet work <laughs> Wet work? <laughs> no, check this out Is that an actual thing? No, so I was watching um, You know Horrible Bosses? So, oh, yeah? So in Horrible Bosses They wanted to Off his boss, right? Mm -hmm. So they hired this guy at a club <laughs> And he's like Oh, yeah uh, He'll do it for us He does wet work Oh, fuck <laughs> Wet works. Hell no. So what's crazy, man? What's crazy? Because wet work is a term they use for like hit men and shit like that to okay, like okay. assassinate. Yeah. Wet work is you get wet like bloody. Yeah, yeah. So they pull up to the hotel uh -huh. to meet the wet work guy. And he pulls out a big sheet. And they're like, yo, chill, not here. You're not killing us, right? Yeah. Why would you pull, pull out the plastic? Uh -huh. It's like, nah, lie down. Lie down is so <laughs> crazy. Lie down. Lie down and he pulls, down his, he pulls his piece out and starts pissing. <laughs> they actually let that happen, fam? There's no way. Yo, watch Horrible Bosses. It's one of my favorite movies, Horrible bro. It's bosses. so fucking funny. Okay, fam. It's so funny, fam. Imagine how much that guy gets paid, though. Just for peeing on people. That's like the That's, second job. Yeah, 100%. Like, there's no. some... Isn't there some people in Dubai that, that pay enough money for feces? Oh, yeah. Oh, that's the Dubai, though. That's the OnlyFans kink, though. Like, mm. you feel me? Okay, what would be your... um? So the equivalent would be the shoes, you said? Yeah, shoes. Nah, I feel oh, like... Or, or here's no, the but it has one. to have an advantage to you. 
Like you should gain an advantage, but at the same time you lose. Okay, I got one. What? Every time you have sex, you you lose a, a week of your life. Would you I, do that? No, nah, I wouldn't. I just I just be a celibate fam. Really? I'd be celibate. I don't think so. I don't, I feel like you can't you can't go like I don't know. I I, I can't do that. I'd be celibate. Really? Yeah, hundred percent. Fam, life is more important. It is. It is. That is true. Maybe. Pa- hold on. Hold on. This is gonna get deep. Ready? Mm. I would only risk it. To procreate though. Okay, so like one time. So I would thing. risk my life to create a life. Mm. Okay, I you understand mean? that. Yeah, that's like a one time thing. Maybe I'll yeah, take a week I'll, off. Yeah, I'll I'll risk my life to cr- <laughs> procreate and create life. Yeah, but at the same time, you're making a new life, so that it's you don't really feel bad. Yeah, right? exactly. But okay. just to like for pleasure, I wouldn't do that. But I don't think that's the equivalent. I think the equivalent is like you gain an edge. Yeah. And but you still lose. Mm. So what do you think? What would you yeah. want an edge in? I guess if if you're an athlete, it's different. Because you can think of so many edges right now. Like, yeah. if you're a boxer and you have the gr- you have the hardest punch in the world, like a one punch knockout. Yeah, but every time you do one punch, yo, that should be a movie, fam. Yeah. Yo, that should be Fuck. a movie. I should write that shit. So every time you punch, so so he makes like a deal. Yeah. But every single time, like he uses that punch, mm-hmm. yo, he loses part of his life. Or yo, what if the plot is, dog? I'm okay. I'm gonna make this a movie. What uh-huh. if the plot is? Every single time he uses that punch, it's a one punch knockout. Every time he uses it, he loses a relationship of somebody he knows in his life. Like they disappear out of his life. Every punch. So every time, no, every time he uses that specific punch. Oh, specific, like an uppercut. But it's like a, it's a knockout every time. It's like a one punch knockout, but he loses like somebody in his life. Can't do that, fam. That's crazy. Because then you're just, it's like, you're obviously winning money, but it's like, damn, imagine you go home and you're about to celebrate the win. Yeah, because you don't know who you're going to (laughs) lose. So, so it becomes like, oh my God, bro. (laughs) That should be a movie, And then what if you don't even know the rules at the time? (sighs) What if you don't even know the rules yeah. that you're going to lose people? And then all of a sudden, like, people start disappearing. Yeah, like, and you realize, <laughs> oh, it's because of that. Like, I, I could already see the ending in that movie. Wins the title championship. Goes home. His mom's gone. Yeah, but it's, yo, that's yeah. so sad, fam. Fuck, fam. I'm writing that. I'm writing. Nobody take that one. Hottest take, though. Yeah. So I know most of you guys do a lot of online shopping and you buy what you want. You're ready to check out and then you see that shipping cost. And then right after you see that, you don't even decide to buy it no more. So for you business owners out there, if you didn't know, shipping costs are the number one cause of abandoned carts. And in a landscape where free and fast shipping is the norm, it can be hard for smaller e-commerce businesses to compete. So keep your business competitive with ShipStation. When you use ShipStation, you can lower shipping costs, make returns easy, and keep your customers happy. So I run my e-commerce business all by myself and obviously it's really hard to manage all the tasks that means organizing all the budgets managing all the shipping but with ShipStation it's a free trial and a quick setup and for all the other business owners out there if you're on the fence about ShipStation now is the time to try so ShipStation makes it easy to grow your business by handling your orders from every marketplace in one dashboard ShipStation effortlessly integrates everywhere you sell online including Amazon Etsy eBay Shopify and more manage every order from one simple dashboard automate routine shipping tasks print shipping labels easily compare rates and delivery times to optimize every shipment and automate delivery notifications and with enterprise solutions that makes warehouse optimization easy ShipStation scales when you do so with the best discounts in the industry you'll never worry about overpaying you for your shipping get up to 84 percent usps and ups rates and if that's not enough use our promo code to try ShipStation free for two months over 130,000 companies have grown their e-commerce business with ShipStation, and 98 of companies that stick with ShipStation for a year become customers for life so keep growing your business all year long with ShipStation. Use promo code JUMPERS today at ShipStation.com to sign up for your free 60-day trial. That's ShipStation.com, promo code JUMPERS, J-U-M-P-E-R-S. If Mayweather used lighter gloves, uh, the proper gloves against Marcelo, I think it was some Mexican guy. Yeah. He would have (laughs) lost. Really? Yeah. Mayweather's a gold throw, bro. If Mayweather didn't have so much control over these fights, he would have had a loss in there. Oh, that's a hot take. Do you think... <clears throat> I, I know this is, this is the Panoi in you that is going to speak, but... Yeah. Do you think Pacquiao... What, no, he would have never beat Mayweather. At that age, maybe prime, but not 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 when they were 
both fighting at that time. I agree. You feel me? I agree. Yeah, I'm not that. You feel me? I, yeah. I love Manny Pacquiao. That's coming I, from you're a rooting Manny for Pacquiao, Pacquiao, though, right? Yes, of you're course. rooting for Pacquiao. Of okay, course. Okay, okay, Who else? Why Mayweather? Crazy? Yeah, I know. That's true. <laughs> he's like he's like a villain to the Filipinos. <laughs> okay, I have a question for you. Yeah. So, if there's a YouTuber boxer, yeah, do you root for the YouTube boxer or do you root for the athlete? What do you mean? So, for example, Jake Paul and Tommy Fury. Who are you rooting for? Oh. Because for me, personally, I'm team YouTube, man. Yeah. I'm just team YouTube just because putting on for creators. Yeah. To go from just making videos online to being on a world stage is, oh, yeah. is really big. I know. Loki, because when Logan fought Mayweather yeah. or, or when Deji fought Mayweather, obviously, we want to see Mayweather get knocked out. Because imagine a pro boxer can't do that. I know. Fam, and Deji, and Deji <laughs> No, nah, you got to give that boy a check. That's like YouTube, fucked. YouTube has to out of their own pocket just give Deji a check. Cuz you know how much people are going to go to YouTube if Deji knocked out Mayweather, Come that would have created the craziest history yeah. ever. Yeah. It would have been like a glitch though. Cuz like that shouldn't not that's not the right script. It was bro. an error. Yeah. <laughs> it was like an someone error. someone was like, "Let me just Yo, fuck it up real quick." God was like, "Nah, okay, this is what we're going to do today." Yeah. <laughs> Yo, oh imagine gosh. that happen. Yeah, we would have to repopulate. Damn. <clears throat> no, nah, cuz look. Yeah. If you Knocked out Conor McGregor mm. and you beat Conor McGregor in the UFC. Yeah. You, right? Yeah. What would you do next? Would you fight again? I would retire. <laughs> I would retire just so there's a there's a what if and it's like, oh, he 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 might go down as the greatest what if fighters because we don't know if he can defend it. I can mm. defend it against okay, no one okay, else. Okay. I feel you. You feel me? It's lucky. But I guess it's different because you're not really into fighting though. Yeah. Well, oh, you because if you, yeah, because if you were if you were a fighter, fighter, right? Mm, yeah. Would you want to train and then be like, "Yo, I can, I can do this again," mm. or do you think it's a one-time thing? Nah, because legacy is already set in stone, fam. You off you, one fight. No, I but, don't think there's no legacy. Nah, listen, listen. You're gonna be the clown. <laughs> nah, because if you if you get knocked out your last your next fight, mm. you knocking out Conor McGregor is less significant. Facts or not facts? Say again, one more time. If it, okay, so you knocked out Conor McGregor. Yeah. Your next fight, you get knocked out bad. Nobody's gonna talk about that's that. a good point. The Gregor shit, you that's a me? good point, still. That's why if we ever retire on this podcast, shit, I can't go bad, I can go out on a bad episode. That's true. You feel me? It's like leave, it's a big superstition, like leaving the gym after well, you without shoot, without, without making a, a swish. You feel me? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think that's actually out. true. Ah, exactly. Fuck. I want to disagree with that, but it is kind of true. Yeah, there's too many points. There's too many, like, you have to leave something. You have to leave on a good note. Yeah, Do, yeah. Would you ever leave anything on a bad note though? Mm. Or would you purposely like go back and change shit? Cause I know for example, like Charon man, yeah. If something's not done right, like he'll go back and do it right. Oh, for real? He's yeah. like that? Charon's like that. That might just be his OCD though. I don't know. I heard this thing where it's like, um, it's like, uh, there's two steps of healing in yeah. like a relationship. It's like one that you do by yourself, but one that you do through another partner, right? Oh, so, so it's like the karmic healing. Yeah, because it's like, that's kind of like, would you redo it? No, I wouldn't. I would do it through another person. Is that fucked to Yo. say? Is that fucked to that's say? Kinda, that's kind of cute though, feel me? Like, no, it's, it's like, not. No, no, this is what I mean though. This is what I mean. Yeah. It's like, because because you couldn't do it to her, you did it to her. What? <laughs> no, you, you didn't do it to, do it. you didn't do her right. And you learn from your mistakes. So the next girl you're going to do right. True. But that's kind of, it's kind of, if we look at it on a negative side, you might be using her to fix you. That that last part. Oh, I think I've misheard that, you then. Yeah, no. So two stages of healing, right? Yeah. One that you can really only do yourself, but one that you have to do through another partner and one you're really intimate with. Oh, so you're using her to heal. Kinda. In a way, it's like a trade-off. Oh, I heard you completely wrong. Yeah, you heard me completely wrong. I, I thought I thought it was like um if if you had a bad relationship. And then that didn't work out. Mm -hmm. You go to the next relationship and then you make it better because of that last relationship. Yeah, you heal yourself through like that person that you're intimate with because you're comfortable enough to do it with them. Mm. Okay, not, I, I heard you totally, wrong. But it's not totally a bad thing though. Yeah. You know I, mean? I don't think it's a bad thing. Yeah, I think not. that's just how it goes. Because look, everything, everything is just trading off. Yeah. Trading off time. Mm -hmm. If you really, really take it in, look, every single thing in the world, yeah. I'm just trading time. Like I have... I have X amount of, just like what we were talking about. Mm. Um, every time you use something, yeah. you take away time on your life. We're taking away time on our life right now, bro. Yeah. Think about that shit. Every single, every single time you link with your girl, you're taking away time on your life to what? To link with your girl. Every single time you're playing Xbox, bro, you take away time on your life to play Xbox. Mm. But you don't have to think about it so hard. But if you do have a goal in your head and you do have like, 
an idea of where you want to take your life and spend your time, mm. especially if you start to think like it's not unlimited because yeah, it's not it's unlimited. Not, but we don't really think like that. What was that guy on Joe Rogan? He said he's like, there's there's two parts in a man's life. One is like when we're oh. born, and then another one is like when he realizes, when he, realizes he only like has one. one life. Yeah, when he only has one. Does this shit matter at the end of the day? You told me it doesn't. I think that's why people have like um, midlife crises mm-hmm. and shit. Because yeah. you know how we had that talk about um, when you're a kid and all of a sudden, yo, what is the meaning yeah, of life? Yeah, yeah like you, you snap. <laughs> yeah, you yeah, snap. Yeah. No, dead ass. I think I I remember exactly when I'm I was like, when holy was shit! It? When was it then? I, it, so this was I want to say around grade six. Yeah, I think I was just um, I was just like looking up at my ceiling. Okay, and then just sleeping, and I woke up and I'm like I just think about life and shit. I'm like holy shit! Wait, like everybody's gonna die at one point. Yeah, like this shit's not forever. Mm. I'm like fuck it! Like holy shit! Like I yeah. should do something. Mm-hmm. Like, am I am I just on autopilot? This is, I, I I said this in the vlog before I think, yeah. but our life doesn't have to be autopilot. And a lot of the time, it feels like you're on autopilot. Yes, yeah, or no? real shit. I'm just it's live. I'm living exactly, yeah. exactly. But it doesn't have to be autopilot. And I feel like, I feel like we're almost taught to keep it in autopilot, and that's that's how you should live. Yes, fam. Not nah, fam. You can take every single opportunity you can. You can you can steer your fucking life into any which way direction you want bro that's why i love having spontaneous friends or friends with adhd because mm. they keep life so entertaining yeah Fam, imagine <laughs> like just a, a guy maybe at 4 a.m will be at a club right and then are my uh spontaneous friend let's go here oh fuck but at the same time i i really think about it's like bro he just wants to make memories we're making memories right exactly, now exactly exactly so i would go out for 5 a.m with you like who cares yeah that's me too i'm so much like that and i realized that at a young age i think that's why i really wanted to go hang out with my friends so much mm-hmm. also when i was a kid i think the reason bro let me know if any of you guys have the same feeling but i had strict parents yeah so i wasn't able to go hang out with my friends a lot Work. when i was a kid yeah i didn't have no like Oh, can I go over to my friend's house? Can I go to blah, blah, blah's house? You're not really rebellious, though. I don't really see that characteristic. Actually, no, never mind. You actually, you are. <laughs> and that that proves the theory that... Damn, I dropped stri- out of school. I know. <laughs> I, I totally forgot that. I totally forget you had dropped out of that. But no, that proves the theory that uh, rebellious... I mean, strict parents create rebellious kids. I don't necessarily... That's... I don't think that's so true. No, that is But it definitely true. affects it. No, that is very true. Because I, I like... I liked... I feel like my parents raised me perfectly because... They gave me rules, but they still gave me freedom. It was like mm. a g- great balance. And that I think that's how I'm going to raise my kid. Mm. Like the exact way, the way they raised me. I think there's something good about strictness, though. No, that that is. Because there's you still like, there's responsibilities, priorities. Yeah. But as soon as you, oh, do whatever you want, then it becomes, oh, your kid's a mess. No, man. you know what it is? Yeah. Yo. Too happen- much freedom or too much. No, thing. you know what it actually is? What? What happens is. You let the world raise your kid. What do you mean? So if you give your kid oh. freedom, they'll turn out like everybody else or the average. Facts. Yo, facts, facts. that's so true. Facts, facts. facts. And if, it really depends if he it has does. a shit friend group. And yeah, exactly. It depends on the friend group and yeah. it's left onto, onto the, the community. Yeah. It's left onto the community to raise the kid now. Yeah. Yo, that's so fucking true. Mm-hmm. Because I didn't turn out so much like my friends. Yeah, you didn't. Holy shit. Yeah. Yo, this guy. Is a no, that's like a, that's like an epiphany in my head. Like, yeah, yeah. Because, <laughs> because I I do love my friends, but now that I think about, it, I didn't really turn out exactly like my friends. Like, Obviously, yeah. I don't do the same thing as them. Like, sure, we have common interests, but yeah. Like, holy fuck, that's and, and so I true. bet, and I bet none of your friends were like, were probably raised the same way you are, and they're all different in their own. All way. different in their own exactly. way. Exactly. That's why. Yeah. That's how it meshes. Yeah. You feel me? Damn. But you take you take a really let's say bad kid, you put him in a. What do you call this? You give him a bunch of rules, mm. bro. He's gonna turn out shit, bro. Damn, that's kind of crazy, fam. Yeah, that's like taking a no. But to be honest, if you take a strict dog, if you if you take a strict mindset and then take care of a dog, okay, the dog is gonna be very behaved though. But I guess humans are different to a point. Yeah, because you can give a thing treats and shit like that. It's way easier to train a dog than a human, fam. No, but you know that um that question was like, uh, if you were the last one on the planet, what would you do? <laughs> You know that one? Yeah. Well, okay. What would you do, actually? <laughs> Me? I don't know. I, I would probably like, like, enjoy it for a moment, and then I would probably just off myself, fam. I I think you told me that before. Yeah. But I think I know what I want to do. Why? What would you do? Like, how are you gonna procreate if you're the only one? No, no, no. That's, so that's out the question. No, no, no. I'm not gonna. 
you could still procreate, but I don't want to get into that. Okay. <laughs> I don't want to get into that. Oh, it's like animals? Yeah, I don't okay, want to get into okay, that, yeah. but I'm not saying I would procreate. I'm not going to do that, uh, but I would pull a no of the ark. What's no of the ark? Just bring a bunch of animals and go sailing? Well, I would I'd like befriend a lot of like animals, oh, animals. and be like freaking Snow White, bro. <laughs> okay, that's kind of fire. That's fire. That is fire. That's fire. Imagine like, okay, for example, mm. in uh in none of it or in like Alaska, yeah. they have huskies and it's the whole squad, bro. Mm -hmm. I guarantee you, that man, if he lives by himself, but with all those dogs, he's not lonely. He's just, yeah, he's just going to become one of them. Yeah, like, it's, it's looking a vibe. Like, yo, what are you saying, bro? What are you saying? Did you catch a squirrel today? You know what I mean? Or, or plot twist, there was a story I read about where, you know, there was a village, right? There's yeah. a whole village. I think it was in Japan, too, where it got cleared out because mm -hmm. everyone started dying of sickness, right? Mm -hmm. So this woman decided to create human-sized, life-sized dolls of everyone oh, that no, lived there. Bro. That's I Am Legend. Oh, it is? That's like I Am Legend, I've never kinda. seen that, yeah. So it was, I think it's, it, the city is called Nagara. Yeah. And this old woman came up with the idea because one day her father died, right? Yeah. And then she dressed up as a, she she created a scarecrow, put all her, uh, the clothes on oh, it. I don't like that. And then, and then look, some guy was walking by, right? And he was like, oh, what's up? And he was like, oh, that's a scarecrow. <laughs> so something popped up in her mind from that experience. Let me create 400, fam. She created 400. Yeah. And it, it wasn't just random dolls. She took the storyline of every single person and created, like, if it was a kid, yeah. it was a kid with two parents. Wow. It, she created, she recreated the school. Like, oh, let me put Tommy in this seat, like, where he was. Yo, that's oh, crazy. Shout out that woman, bro. Are you ready? Yeah. What if yeah. we are living in a world of exactly that? and it's advanced technology, and we are just the creation of one person creating a storyline. Oh, wow. <laughs> and we're all, <laughs> that's kind of crazy. That's the same that's thing. Kinda... So this person, mm. instead of creating 400, created 8 billion, 8 billion. and every single one. Oh no, that's God. Exactly. That's God. I, it just clicked in my mind. Yeah, that's not, not that kind of crazy because that is God right now. Isn't that crazy? Damn, bro. But if you, if you put it onto like that type of level, like, mm. Yo, everybody does have their own storyline. It's kind of like, that's yeah. kind of life, but. Real shit. And then who knows, what if it, yo, you ever hear that, that theory how like we could all be in someone's head? Like this is all just a dream. Oh, like, uh, so like me and you could be in Dino's head right now yeah, and yeah, we're yeah, just yeah. living in his. Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's kind of fucked. It's like a dream. Yeah. Th this is also a thought I had in the shower today. Since this AI stuff is getting so advanced, right? Mm -hmm. Like to the point where it's getting smarter than the human mind. Yeah. Would a degree even matter? <laughs> That's what I've been saying this, bro. Because fam, imagine, because we it's on a lower level, we already have chat GPT. Yeah. It's it's able to create able to go through the whole course and get a degree, right? Yeah. So imagine in maybe like say 10, 5 years max minimum, mm -hmm. we already have that computer chip where we can I can go into nursing if I want. Mm. I can switch it up, but I can get that degree because I can just flip that switch. Exactly. Then what's the point of all this then? Yo, check this out. I literally have pages on pages in my notes about that exact topic. Yeah. And I was going to do it for a vlog. Yeah. I'm going to just say it here right now. Mm. There's no more. Like, life life changes every single day. Just the workforce hasn't. Yeah. But eventually, we're going to come to the point where it can keep up. Where, where, where it can update that quickly. Mm. But it just doesn't because there's too much money put into the education system. And the education system is already funded by what? Yeah. The governments, the elites, the the rich people, bro. The rich people stay rich. Mm -hmm. They're gonna control you and make you go to their school so they keep making money. Mm -hmm. Like they don't they they don't care if society advances. They don't care if the world is better. They just care if they're still on top and still making money. Yeah. Your job, they don't fucking care. Mm -hmm. Whether you get a good job, a bad job, whatever. They don't they don't fucking care at all if they have a, a, enough doctors or a little doctors. Yeah. What they really care about is, yo, think about it. If it was so much that they cared about, oh, let's have all these people in the right jobs, the right sectors of life, education would be free. Mm, fact. If they really cared, but nah, you have to pay for that. Mm. Yeah, bro. Think about it, fam. <laughs> no, and look, it would actually be beneficial for capitalism too if you gave everybody what they're good at for free. Yeah. But no, they make too much money off of it because mm -hmm. everybody would be in a job they excel at. Yeah. But they don't want that because that's too much success. They want poor people mm -hmm. because 
poor people are the desperate ones that make the decisions that the money leaks into and goes back into the rich people's pocket. Yeah. That's fucking deep. I hope like, you know what I mean? Yeah, that's, that's a little bit too, that's a little bit too woke for y'all. But no, cause I saw this thing too. It was like, if you put fleas yeah. right in a, in a jar, they can't jump as high and you close it and you leave it for three days mm. and you open back the lid. They will only jump to the point where they can't escape. Mm -hmm. So that's the same as you put a bunch of these kids in school you tell them rules, you give them rules, you put them in that system, yeah. they're not gonna go higher than that system. And it's and it's the kids and it's the offspring of the ones that already know the boundary or yeah. the illusion of the boundary. Yeah. But it's the rebellious kids that say fuck the boundary. Mm. I know. The ones that don't. But, they, but the rebellious kids turn out rich too. Why do you think? Because they know it's the, how to maneuver. It's low-key the rebellious kids that make it out. Yeah. Fuck, man. It's low-key the rebellious kids that make it out from the system. Yeah, bro. Because imagine, yeah. Because they don't follow rules, bro. Yeah. Fuck, bro. But we're not, we're, we're taught to follow rules from day one, man. Mm -hmm. We're taught to follow rules from day one. Theory right now. Yeah. School, the school system with recess, with the food trays, with sitting down, yeah. with different sectors. That's training for prison. Mm. It's the exact system. It's the exact format as prison. Like you have six hours, you have playtime, your recess. They have that in prison too. Mm -hmm. And then you all get pushed down into your own cubbies, whatever it may be. Is prison a way like, you know that um, karmic thing mm. to show people like the celebrities, they make jokes, uh, obvious jokes to like, uh, to tell the, the other people like, oh, this is what we're doing to you, but we don't want karma on us. Is, was prison made just to show those the uh, just society that oh we're literally doing what you're doing outside in here? Mm. You know what I think it is, bro. Yeah. Check this out, because I literally just had this thought right now. Mm -hmm. Schools, right? Teachers. Yeah. We're all taught to be quiet when the teacher is speaking. Yeah. Now, if we're all taught to be quiet when the teacher is speaking, we give the authority to the teacher. Mm. That doesn't give the other kids the ability to speak out and have their own ideas and them collaborate with each other as much. But sure, like the teacher should have authority and be able to control the class. But I'm so curious how it would work out if the kids start, you know what I mean? Yeah. If they had freedom to no, speak out. It's a shit show, man. It's a, it might be a shit show. It might be a shit show. But I'm just very show. curious like how that would play out. Cause that's what the, cause every single person, at least the majority of people mm -hmm. went to school system and have been in that setting as a kid in the brainwashing period, like when you're when your brain is malleable, yeah. when you're learning things, we're all told right away, shh, the teacher's talking. Mm -hmm. shh, you can't talk out of place. Yeah. How would how would the world be different if everybody wasn't taught to be quiet when it's not their turn? Okay, no. So we can go back to the raising your kids. Mm -hmm. Too much freedom, bad. Too much like rules, yeah. bad. So not even a hot take, but the system is perfect. I don't know. The system is perfect. Why? Because the rebellious kids will have an opportunity. You'll still have rules on you, yeah. but you'll have the opportunity all your life to take that jump out, right? Yeah, that's true. But if, um, what do you call this? If you don't, you're stuck in the system, but the system will still lead you throughout mm. your life. And that's your purpose. That's your role. I think, I think that's the way to look at it. Yeah. I think you should look at it as everything is perfect as it is. As it is. Because... Cause this is what it like. This is how you, how you live, fam. Yeah. Like you find ways, you find the things you can't control, and yeah. you find the things you can. No facts. And then that's no how facts. you live. So the mentality that everything is perfect how it is mm. pushes you to strive better by finding different opportunities and finding different avenues for you to succeed in nah. the, with the things you can control yeah. instead of just sitting down like, well, like, I can't do anything, bro. Yeah. Like, uh, God, this is too hard. No. Like, nah, you start to think, okay, this is the shit I can control. This is the shit I can't. It narrows it down. Mm. Like, boom, I can, I can control this right here. Now, once, once you develop that mindset that, uh, Oh, I can control this. I can. I can't control that. Your life will be less stressful mm -hmm. because you're not worrying about it anymore. And, and it it's it's so universal. Yeah, it goes to everything with the relationships, with mm -hmm. career, with even just cooking, bro. Like, <laughs> like oh fuck, I can't. I can't make the chicken a different temperature. Okay, but I can't control where I put it and then change the temperature that way. You know. Yeah. But sometimes it gets like um, it gets too, uh, what do you call this? 
<laughs> if you all if you're always going on that like oh i'm stress-free i can't control this you might get into the habit and now you're like just lazy no but i think you because look now now it's like um say oh i can't control this boom uh that's not my fault uh that problem right there that's not my fault whole time you're just digging a rabbit hole for yourself no 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 because because what you need yeah this is the prayer i always say mm. god surrend uh god grant me the serenity to accept the things i cannot change mm. but wisdom to know the difference mm. so wisdom to know the difference like okay i know that i have the ability to change this yeah i know i have i don't have the ability to change that mm. so the wisdom part is still very, very, very important. That's the second part of the prayer. Yeah, yeah. If you only have the first part of the prayer, it's not going to work out. You need the second part too. <laughs> Damn, bro. I seen something too. Is like some guy who, who reads the Bible. Yeah. He's like, yo, a lot of books. I don't like, um, when I read it over again, I already know like there's nothing new, but whenever he reads the Bible, he said, at least maybe 15 times there's always something new like mm. 20 things that, that are new i think there's something so crazy about it because it's so relevant no matter what no matter it's like no matter shit. what century that shit is all relevant and it's it's fuck because that goes to show like humans always make the same mistakes and i think that's just our true spirit of we're supposed to have these challenges and these difficulties as humans so that we can learn from it and those are the best stories that's why i love people yeah. I love people because we're meant to make certain mistakes and learn off each other. Exactly. We're meant to have certain storylines that take us down these paths of drama, uh, pain, sometimes straight happiness. But a lot of the times the happiness comes from pain yeah. or the pain sometimes comes from happiness and then turns into happiness. Mm. Right. Yeah, bro. And that's why it's like, even though you might say like, Oh, this person, I hate that this person came into my life. Nah, bro. That person probably changed your life. Yeah, like, yeah, 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 like yeah. A lot. That, that's what I... Grudges? Come on, bro. At, at that point... You know this is not even a hot take, but listen. Every single person that broke your heart, they might be... They may very well be the, the most important person in your life yes. because they made you stronger yeah. or weaker. But if you're weaker gave you the opportunity to be stronger fam look at a boogie right a boogie he was expecting a baby mm. day of he found out that's not his baby mm. guess what he did heartbreak song changed his life that whole that whole thing the whole relationship with this girl changed his life that yeah. relationship changed his life and that's what's dope about art because when you have an outlet to take emotion and put it into something mm -hmm. that's when you see beautiful art come through and in the same way, it doesn't have to be an art outlet yeah. where you can take that same emotion and use that as energy into fighting, into, you know what I mean? Whatever you strive for it. Let's say you're in business. Mm -hmm. Like, you can use that as motivation. Like, because this girl rejected me, oh, I'm going to get rich now. Yeah. Like, that's still a good motivation. Like, you take that energy of feeling low yeah. to push you to be high. Because I feel like if you're already high, it's hard to want to strive even higher. This is fucked, though, but I always thought this to myself but it's like oh fuck this is so fucked but i feel like god keeps like the bad people on this earth for longer and he takes the good people out like faster i don't know why why it's like that but yeah. it's like it's all the stories and like all the things i've heard of uh, people that i have oh he's such a great guy he didn't deserve this but you feel me shit like that but i don't know it's like dude does he keep it the bad people on this earth just to like oh maybe earth is hell this is really hell i'm gonna keep you here you feel me but the good people I, i'm gonna take you out don't worry all right you want to get deep bro yeah we'll this, this might bro. be the deepest thing i ever said because i never talked about this before yeah so i had panic attacks before yeah because i thought i was gonna die because mm. i thought there was a moment in my mind i thought am i more valuable dead knock on wood no but like from what i've already left behind mm -hmm. and let's say you disappear yeah. everything that's left behind now might even be boosted up more and solidified in history because you oh, passed away early that's so fucked which is very sad like for example x for example juice world like even though they had a short amount of time in this world mm. it was amplified low peep it was amplified and solidified because it was so powerful sure they didn't have that many listeners viewers fans whatever but because it was cut short 
everybody paid attention. No, but was it? It was meant to be though. Is it was it meant to be? Because it's like God is like this needs to be heard. Uh, but even though I have to do it this way, I'm gonna take care of you up there. I know. It's it's so. Crazy. And that's why I just got really scared. Like, obviously, this is not gonna happen. Like, who knows? Yeah. Like, knock on wood. Obviously, right. Obviously. But it just like it just really made me scared. Yeah, I get that though. Cause I always go do the like. As, and that's not to say that I've done so much. That's not to say that. Yeah. That's not to say that. It's just the idea of like, are you more valuable mm-hmm. here? And then I was going through a moment of, what do I need to do? Like, do I feel like I've accomplished everything? Do I have goals and aspirations? The problem was at that very moment, I felt like I didn't have anything like set on my mind. Yeah. And that was a scary moment. And then I said that in my vlog to the most the thing I fear most, and this is so true, like I dead ass feel this, the thing I fear most is not having a challenge to overcome. Cause the moment you don't have a challenge to overcome, you feel like you're nothing. Yeah, yeah. Cause you have nothing to do. Mm-hmm. It's like you beat a video game and then like, there's what, what are you gonna do now? Yeah, bro. And that's not the mindset you wanna live ever, uh. never. Like there's always so many different challenges you can find in your life and things that you can use to push yourself and things to see like, I have greater purpose here. I have greater purpose there. Like, you never want to think like that. And that's that's a that's something I had to like fucking go through this <laughs> one night. It's fucking panic attack. Just like I never I never really talk about my panic attacks, but that's one panic attack I had. Or, yeah, not because it's like what if it's like once you find your purpose on this earth, then that's where it's like oh he'll take you, just because it's like he wants to protect you from the evil down here since you already found it. You feel me? I don't know. That's just a thought that, that goes through my head because I always hear these stories about like good people passing away early or, or like getting hit by a bullet that wasn't meant for them and shit like that. It's like, sometimes yeah. I think it's like, was it, is it God pr- actually protecting them from all the evil down here in a, in a, in a different way? I don't know. Cause I'm not God, obviously. Yeah. It's definitely a sad thing to think about. <laughs> it is. And it's a scary thing to think about. Like I never really like, want to think about that stuff. Yeah, man. But yeah, that was one of the moments I have found like, literally the scariest one of the scariest moments of my life did you feel like um more uh what do you call this not afraid of anything yet after that because after you have some shit like that i feel like you're you're, you're fearless no i want to say yeah because yeah but i do f- i still have the same fear of i need to do something bro mm. i can't just fucking like sit around and do sh- like jack shit yeah, yeah. like obviously there's moments i have to like chill give time for myself and take part in the human experience mm-hmm. Well, fuck them. Like, Loki, I feel like everybody has their purpose. Oh, like, they have sure. to fuck. They have to complete. Yeah, and everybody, if you you think you don't have your purpose or you think you're nobody, fam, everybody in this world is a somebody. Dead like, ass. No, listen. A lot of y'all don't realize. Sometimes you could just be in class and you could have a smile on your face and you inspire somebody you would else. Light up that person's. You day. inspire somebody else that you didn't notice, but they saw you happy and they said, "Fuck, that guy's happy." Hmm. Maybe I won't off myself today. Exactly. Impact is impact. You no matter don't how, know. what degree. No matter what degree. It could be a little smile like that. You don't know, bro. Amen. And you have so many blessings. Like, never never think like that. Facts. Never think that you don't have anything. You you have the world. Facts. If you're alive right now, you, you have the world right now. Count your blessings, bro. Facts. But yeah, man. It's crazy. As soon as we got that little Jesus candle... That we got deep still. <laughs> what, if, what if that shit just lit up like randomly? And that's I saw a miracle, that. though. I know it's a miracle. <laughs> that would be crazy. That was a crazy thing. You want to end it there? I, let's end it on like something happy, fam. Like, let's <laughs> talk about something like not so serious before we end it off. I feel like that's a good way because we would, would keep people thinking. No, but I don't want to like go to bed right now. Like, <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to. Let me put my sunglasses back on and shit. You know? Oh, I have a, I have a theory. I have a lighting theory. Yeah. So, <laughs> so I seen this thing where it's like. A guy was telling, like, what is classy to rich people and what is uh, trashy to poor people, right? Mm-hmm. And I did, never knew this. So, overhead lighting, yeah. like, the ones that come from a thing, is trashy it is, yeah. to rich people, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, but, um, what do you call this? Like, shit that comes out from the middle ground? Um, oh, fuck. I know what you're calling it. I know I know what it is. Oh, it's, oh, it's not overhead. It's like, it's like wall lighting. Wall lighting is actually, um classy for interior lighting interior, or something yeah, yeah interior lighting that doesn't come from the above yeah it's very very classy for rich people so i i have this theory where it's like celebrities only look better than us on these instagram lives and shit like that just because they can afford a certain 
lighting. Mm. So imagine Kylie, I seen a thing where it's like Kylie Jenner in her old house when she was still on the come up, didn't look like a celebrity still. As soon as she got into her bathroom with some next lights, Fam, she looked cra- like a crazy mm, glow up. Because it's the lighting in the crib, the yeah, even on the selfies and because shit. Because she uh, can afford that lighting. Yo, that's a good theory, yeah. actually. No, because because even like TikTokers and influencers, the reason they look good is because they have, they have certain lighting. lighting to make the content. Uh-huh. That's so you, true. I'm telling you, lighting is a big part. And, and the lighting in, in the gym is different from the lighting in the in the stores Gosh. and the lighting in your house is different. You know, everything's... Yeah, maybe it's not just colors, fam. It's oh, lighting. you know what's crazy? So I, I just said this on the on the vlog that's coming out. Okay. It's coming out tomorrow. Yeah. So go look for that. <laughs> Anyways, did you know uh-huh. if you wear sunglasses, fam, uh-huh. check this out. If you wear sunglasses when it's sunny outside, yeah. you will get sunburnt more likely. What? You're more likely to get sunburnt if you wear sunglasses. How? Check How? this out. Check this out. So our eyes uh-huh. can sense the sun yeah. and it senses when the sun is hitting us and when it's harsh lighting, right? Okay. Now, our eyes tell us to produce melanin in our skin. Mm. So if our eyes can't realize that the sun is that harsh because we're wearing a lens over top, it's gonna burn your skin. Now think about it. Yeah. Why is it only the people that wear sunglasses are hella burnt. that get sunburned? <laughs> Now think every single time that you got sunburnt, were you wearing sunglasses, bro? Were you wearing sunglasses, fam? The only times I got sunburnt, I was wearing sunglasses. Oh, that's kind of fucked. I didn't know that. Right? That's kind of But it makes so much sense. Yeah, because it's kind of like an illusion. Yeah. I didn't know it does that, though. Yeah, like, so because it, it's literally, like, it's playing with our eyes. It's playing guess, with our eyes. Yeah. But I didn't know that our eyes can, like, tell it, like. Yeah, it's our body trigger, fam. Oh. How is how is our our skin supposed to know? Yeah, that's, that's literally cool. how it knows. That's literally how it knows. No, that's a crazy fact, though. Yeah. That's fun. okay. We'll end it off there, though. Yeah, we'll end we'll end off, it off that's there. That's a great way to end it off. <laughs> <laughs> it's bad interest. Good. I I just realized I had that theory because uh-huh. I had sunglasses. Here. You know these are from Dollarama. Hey man, get it how you live, man. This Make it this, how you this live. is like a dollar fifty, but it I'm looks telling like you, bro. It's some designer I'm telling shit. You, bro, I was wearing fake jewelry all that before, fam. I had to come up. I had to get revenge. Just iced out. Just to. It's like a troll. <laughs> it's like I, I bought this for a petty reason. It's for everyone who called my jewelry fake. Now they can't do that. You feel me? <laughs> Come on, bro. Shout That's out Nar. So I want to say one story real quick. Okay. So yeah. um, Jamie Foxx, mm. he went to a gas station one time. Yeah. And he took these glasses mm. off the gas station. And he's like, yo, these are kind of fire. Put them on. Yeah. He posted on his Instagram story. And so many replies, so many comments like, yo, what brand is that? What brand is that? What brand is that? <laughs> it's literally just fucking from the gas station. Yeah. And you know what he said? He oh. said, it's just all setting. Yeah, it's because he's wearing he it. Wore it. He's he's posted up in like a Rolls Royce or whatever it may be. Yeah, it's the setting of itself that makes that illusion. Like, yo, you can look successful. Yeah. It's just the setting. Like, if I give a Rolex to our boy mm. that only works like a part time job, it's not gonna look right. You're probably gonna think it's fake. Mm-hmm. But if you give it to your millionaire homie, yeah, no, if you give your Millionaire homie, a fake Rolex. Mm-hmm. You're gonna think that one's real. Yeah, that's a that's another theory. Rappers on stage wear fake jewelry, probably, or they wear fake jewelry. They just get one real chain and where the rest is fake. Probably. Yeah, because why? Why spend that money? Why spend that money? Everybody else thinks when it's everyone real. Everyone thinks you're losing. You're literally playing the game right now. Yeah, everybody else thinks it's real. If you were really smart, you would do that. Yeah. And rappers are usually, eh, they're okay. <laughs> Yeah, you don't yeah. know, fam. Uh, just think about that shit because sometimes it's just an illusion. Yeah, bro. Think about the real life, man. Just think about that real life. Facts. All right, we'll end it off there. Thank you, everyone, for watching the, this episode of Jumpers Jump Podcast. Make sure to comment, like, subscribe, and go check out my vlog channel. Yes, go check out the Carlos Rico channel. Link in the description below. Yes, sir. And we're so close to a mail. Please, right now, if you haven't already, click that subscribe button. Download all the episodes on Apple, Spotify. We love you guys, man. And if you made it this far, I want you guys to comment, like right now, and I want you guys to comment if we should throw a party in Toronto for a million subs comment right now tell me right now if you guys want that if you guys made it to the end of the episode project j all right jumpers jump out who's this